welcome to Tema International School's annual production. This year, TIS's talented students have prepared a student's device performance. Evolution, a tale of fragmented sounds. Music from the medieval times through to the 21st century have been incorporated in this beautiful work of art. Apart from its entertainment purposes, this production aims to raise funds towards the Akoli Kope project. Hence, fasten your seatbelts as you embark with a girl on her journey to find herself through eras of music. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. What do I hide? What do I hide? What do I hide? What do I hide? Yeah. Joseph! Catch me right. No, no. Ah, now it's my turn to hide. I won't try it. No, you're not hiding again. It's my turn to hide. No, you're not hiding again. Oh, oh no, stop. Bethany, oh, look. Look, I'm hiding. I'm Three, hiding two, you. one. Yo. Oh, Bethany, stop. I'm hiding. It's my turn to no. hide. But you wasted time. It's my turn to hide. No, it's my turn. Ah. Okay, okay, let's play another game. Another game. What game? Black shoe. Okay, I'll, I'll play. Uh -huh, black shoe. Black shoe, black shoe, change your black shoe. Bethany! Hey, that's your mother, here or there. Where? Right, left. Child. Don't tell my mom what to Bethany! Where? Bethany! There you are. And you found the audience. Oh my, why are you in such a hurry? Good evening. Sorry for the false start. You have probably read in your programs that we're scheduled to perform a play for you tonight. Evolution, a tale of fragmented sounds. However, I am so, so sorry to say that we will not be performing the play tonight. What? So sorry. Oops, I wasn't supposed to say that. However, because I have so much respect for you, 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 and all of you as an audience, and because I care so much about this magnificent institution we like to call theater, I feel as though I must offer you some kind of explanation. The title, though, Evolution, a tale of fragmented sounds, sounds more like a half-baked music theory propounded by some musical lunatic. Dear child, in absence of the production, how about I give you a free musical tutorial? Not now, mom. You are not going to cancel the performance. Hmm. Maybe not. Now, onto our music theory lesson. Wikipedia provides three understandings of this term. One. Music theory refers to the fundamental elements of music, such as tone, pitch, rhythm, and harmony. Boring. Huh. Okay, maybe this one will interest you. Two, music theory refers to the structures and natures of music. Hmm, quite interesting. I'm sure this one will get your mind. Three, music theory as a scholarly discipline. Please spare me the academic boredom. I mean, what could be a better way of teaching musical theory than practicing it? Hmm. So the play might actually come on after all. Yeah. I can attend to play a few strings on the cello. Or the violin.
What is it? It's the story about the coat of many, many colors. Not now, Mom. Stop asking too many questions, child. Once upon a time. Drop from the mountain peak. A lost girl all the way under. All she hears now is thunder. King, an everlasting melody. Wishing for that beautiful symphony. A reflection taken away. The music begging her to stay. But her mother says no. She tells her to stop or she will have to go. Her shattered heart begging to be free for the music she most definitely needs. Running back, she lost her way to the music that begged her to stay. Music is her every breath, and now she may fall to her sudden death. But her mother never understood that music only did her good. Until that one day when her mind was changed. There was a bird chirping outside. She threw stones and did all she could to make it abide, to make it go away, until she was suddenly faced with silence. Met with a string of violence. And then she realized it was all so wrong. Trying to silence any song.
there was darkness. Of course, it took just one voice to change you, to tell you that you didn't need to think. It took a shape of a voice that you thought of to tell you not to think. It took just a sound, it took just a tale of fragmented sounds. You fell, and how did you fall to the ground? The ground fell below you, and you fell with it. A head full of void, and darker void of a caimit. You're a whirl of emotions. You just don't know what to pick. Because she's lost in a sea of darkness. But it's not cold. It's not uncomfortable. It's warm. Loving, trusting, comforting. Or so she thinks. That voice she's talking to doesn't care. It's not about her best interests, it's about the rules. It's about what society wants to see. So why can't she just see it? Wait, look, look. I think she almost sees it. She knows now. She knows that there's a light out there. She knows that there must be another way. I see the clouds gathering. There's a storm coming. Did your magic cause this great storm at sea? If so, please make it stop. I have done nothing wrong. I've only done what is best for you. You, my daughter, who doesn't know anything about who you are or where you came from. I've never thought of wanting to know more. It's time I let you know. Give me a hand removing my magic cloak. Sit down. Now I'll tell you more. Sometimes you've tried to tell me, but you've always stopped. It's left me wishing that you'd tell me more. It's time now. Twelve years ago, I was the Duke of Milan, a powerful prince. What happened to make us leave? Was it good or bad? Both. Wicked things happened to make us leave. But we were so lucky. My brother, your uncle, was called Antonio. Next to you, I loved him more than anyone else in this world. That I trusted him to manage my kingdom. I left the business of government to him. But I was so busy reading my books and improving my mind that I neglected everyone else. Antonio started thinking that he was the duke because he was carrying my duties. Oh, heavens. The king of Naples, an enemy of mine, believed Antonio. And one night, they opened the gates and rushed us through. Why didn't they kill us? Fortunately for us, Gonzalo, a noble man who was in charge of getting us out, gave us some food, water, and fresh clothes to keep us alive. And knowing that I love my books so much, Gonzalo gave me some books from my library that I prized even more than my kingdom. Thank heavens. And now that I can't stop thinking about it, what is your reason for causing this storm at sea? Oddly, good luck has brought our enemies to us. You feel sleepy. Come here, Ariel. Come. Approach my servant. Come. I come to answer your call. Be it to fly, to swim, to dive into the fire, or to ride on the cloud. Ariel and all her fellow spirits at your command. Spirit. Have you done all that I have ordered to do? Oh, I've done everything. I boarded the king's ship. With fire, I struck terror. With lightning flashes, thunder, explosions, and bold waves. I took care of everything. The king's son, Ferdinand, was the first to jump overboard. But are they safe? Oh, no one was hurt. And as you ordered, I've scattered them around the island in groups. I, myself, landed the king's son. And what did you do with the ship? The ship is safely in a harbor. I hid it in a deep cove. You have carried out my orders exactly. But there's still more work to do. We both have to make the most of the time between now and six o'clock tonight. More hard work? And since you're so demanding, may I remind you of what you promised but have not given me? And what may that be? My freedom. Before the time is out? Absolutely not. Remember that I have served you well. I've
told you no lies, made no mistakes, and served without grumbling about it. You promised to give me my freedom early. Have you forgotten the torture that I freed you from? Of course not. You were the servant of the witch, Sycorax. She was banished from Algiers for doing things too horrible to mention. She hid him in a split pine tree because she refused to obey her. For 12 years in great pain, you were in the split pine tree, and then she died and left you there. Thank you for rescuing me. I shall do whatever you command. Good. Now go, but make yourself a water knave. You need to be invisible to everyone but to me. Go and do as I have asked. Wake up, dear one. Wake up. Your strange story made me sleepy. Come, let's go and visit my slave, Caliban. He's a bad person. I do not like to see him. He's still very useful to us. He fetches our wood and makes our fires. Caliban, slave, you, answer. Ah, uh, there is enough wood. You look good, my genius, Ariel. Have you done as I have asked? Everything. Good. You poisonous slave, get out. Ah, may the southwest winds blow on the both of you and blister you all over. This island is mine because of my mother, Sycorax, and you are taking it from me. When you first came, you gave me water with berries. You told me about the big light in the day and the small night in the night. I loved you. I showed you everything on this island, from the fresh springs, the burn spots, and the fertile ones. Catch me, I did that. May all the spells of my mother, beetles, toes, rats, light on you. I am the only subject you have. I was once my own king. Now you keep me in that useless cave and away from the rest of Ah, uh, you lie. It works better when I punish you than when I am kind to you. You are dead, but I even let you sleep in my cave. You disgusting slave. You do not understand goodness. I used to feel sorry for you and taught you how to speak. But you are so disgusting that the cave is better. But prison would have been better. May I be cursed for hearing your language. Go! Go and fetch us some more wood. And if you disobey me, I shall make you roar. So the beast will tremble when they hear you. Don't! I have to obey him. His magic is so powerful. He could control my mother. Get out of here! Open your eyes and tell me what you see. Oh, it is so handsome, but it's a spirit. How does it move around? Just like the seeds in the soil and the ground underneath. We all need to be taken care of. Be it the sunlight from the summer, the water from the oceans, or the wind that creates our air. Without each of these, growth would be a hopeless dream. She is just a seedling. And with that, all she needs is the water, the air, the sunlight. All she needs is to find it. She needs to move, but her roots are too fragile and not deep enough. And as the winter comes, what happens to sunlight? What happens to the non-humid air? And before spring comes, she may be just a hopeless dream. The first of spring has arrived. The birds celebrate her return with happy songs, and the brooks of the gentle zephyrs with sweet murmurs flow. But the sky is covered in a dark mantle, and lightning and thunder announce a storm. When quiet returns, the birds again take up their lovely songs, and in the flower rich meadow, to the murmurs of leaves and plants. The goat herd sleeps, his faithful dog at his side. And to the merry sounds of rustic bagpipes, nymphs and shepherds dance their love sports when spring appears in its brilliance. An 
under the merciless sun, languishes mud and flock. The pine tree burns. The cuckoo begins to sing, and at once, join in the turtle doves and the goldfinch. A gentle breeze blows, but Boreas joins battle suddenly with his neighbor, and the shepherd weeps because overhead hangs the dreaded storm and his destiny. limbs are rubbed to the rest by his fear of the lightning and heavy thunder and the furious swarm of flies and hornets. Alas, his fears are well founded. There is lightning and thunder in the sky and the hail cuts down the lofty ears of corn. shivering in the icy snow. In the strong blast of a terrible wind. To run, stamping one's feet at every step. With one's teeth chattering through the cold. To spend the quiet and happy days by the fire. While it's outside, the rain soaks everyone. To walk on the ice with slow and steady steps. To go carefully for fear of falling. To go in haste, slide, and fall. And to go on the ice again and run. Until the ice cracks and open. To hear leaving their Iron Gate house, Sikro, Boris, and all the winds in battle. This is winter, but it brings joy.
Imagine the frustration, imagine the struggle, imagine the pain, the pain, the pain of the voice, the voice that told her she was there, but she had two more steps to go, two more steps to reach her final destination, but her final destination was two further steps away. But she kept going, thinking of the colors, the colors that are supposed to be bright, but yet, there's no light around her. So if she should turn back, not too far, but far enough, would it come back? What more did she have to lose? And so she persevered. Her perseverance turned into anger, her smiles turned into tears, her hopes turned into worries, with worries being heightened and emotions bearing free. What more hope did she have than not to worry? So I ask again, can you imagine her frustration, her struggle, and her pain?
Unseemable poise. Her words, oh, they linger in one's head. Her sweet voice on repeat, she will never be forgotten. She's a friend every human dreams of having. Her voice puts a restless heart to sleep and makes her doll so beg for more. It wipes tears of giving faces. She is the meaning of love. She is the life of the party. There is no dull moment around her. With one gentle snap, of her powerful fingers. Everything is set right. She is the life of the party. She makes twists and turns unexpectedly. She has a mind of her own, not one to follow the usual pattern. She does the craziest things as long as they please her adoring fans. She is unpredictable. She can be soft and kind. She can be loud and distinct. She can be depressed and obsessive. She can be playful and she can be fun. The bell is rung, and we've come here to catch the factory girls on their way back. And we will follow you, dark haired cigarette girls, murmuring words of love to you. But you don't see like a mesita. There she is. There she is. There's a mesita. Come. We all throng up to you. Answer us and leave. And tell us when you're ready to love us. When am I going to love you? Perhaps today? Perhaps never. But certainly not today.
remember when she was a lost girl all the way under, when all she had was thunder, when her shattered heart was begging to be free for the music she needed, and when she fell, she fell harder to the ground, the ground fell below her, and she fell with it. Do you remember that as the winter came, she wondered, what happens to the sunlight? What happened to the non-human air? And before spring came, would she just be a hopeless dream? Now starting again, the strange, strange things, things, the frustration, frustration the, the struggle, struggle, the pain. pain.
not spoken to her, but she's the most interesting person I've ever encountered. She sits there all by herself with her music blasting her eardrums and able to hear the regular coffee shop madness happening around her. She'll glance up and notice it, but she chooses not to actually see it. She's in her own little world, and she liked it that way. She'll sit there in her chair at the end of the table in the coffee shop for as long as you let her, flipping through the pages of her favorite book or creating sparks with weapon of choice, the pen. Every season she'll be there as winter comes to an end and spring begins to bloom. She emerges out of the tiny cocoon she puts herself in for the winter. When the sun is out, she's shedding her own light on all the regulars in the coffee shop. She might not be talking to them, but she's enchanting them in her own special way, in her chair, at the end of the table in the coffee shop. Her music varied with the seasons as well. I knew what music she listens to because she bursts so loudly against the brick walls of the coffee shop. She probably thinks she's doing us a favor. I don't know much about this girl. I wish I knew a little bit more. I wish I knew every single detail about her, but I do know a few things for certain. She's the seasons. She changes her appearance and her mysterious attitude towards everything outside her little world. Her drink and her music change too. The only thing that remains the same through all of the changes is her spot in her chair at the end of the table in the coffee shop until the day I said hello. Hey everyone, this is the studio, the music cafe, where magic happens or will happen. This is where everything gets bright and lively. I say, uh, this is where everything is bright and lively. This is where the next big band is going to birth itself. And you are a witness to the first moments of its life. Take it in. Take a moment to let the aura ooze over you. Yes, feel it. It comes in different shapes and patterns and flows with the wind. In this cafe, things happen. And we see music evolve. All right, man, roll the rhythm. Cha, 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 cha. Oh, 
because you have nothing to say, because you don't think anything. He was warm 
and he was gentle. Passing bells and sculpted angels seemed like the wrong companions to him. Why can't the past just die knowing that we must say goodbye? No more memories. No more silent tears. No more gazing across the wasted years. Help me say goodbye. has never been a conscious effort for me to hurt you. Knowing that I've hurt you makes me feel so sad. I wish I could tell you that it would never happen again, but that would be a lie. The unfortunate thing is that when you're upset and sad, then everyone else is upset and sad. I'm so sorry that I encounter has had to be a roller coaster ride 
with highs and lows. You can close your eyes to the things you do not want to see. But you cannot close your heart to the things that you don't want to feel. My encounter is meant to impact the lives of people, even though it hurts. And my encounter with you is part of the story. I'm in pain, yes. But well, I guess time will have to tell its own story.
Only my dear, your son, so why, dear, why? Eh, why we are getting here, me who be do? Me see, 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 Your love took me by surprise, and it's a fact that I can't deny. Someone please tell me why. I feel pay the price now. Your love took me by surprise, and it's a fact that I can't deny. Someone please tell me why. I feel pay the price now. Sa 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 koto sa 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 koto sa 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 sa. Odo ne nuwa ne kum me koto sa 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 koto sa 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 koto sa 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 sa. Odo ne nuwa ne kum me in kabo baya eh in kabo baya eh in kabo baya mo eje mo so eh eh in kabo baya eh in kabo baya eh in kabo baya mo eje mo so eh eh. No no sumo fe ke mo mi ko mi ne ma fe ah. Close together, yeah. 
modern times. Evolution, my dear child, is the rise, the fall, and the lie of music. However, I never did answer your question. What is the thrill? It's in fact that music never dies. Send 
because I certainly did. It was brilliant to know that the students put together this magnificent play is just awesome. We hope that some way, somehow, you were able to find yourself through the errors as we come to the end of evolution. This production would not have been possible without the backstage team. Let's acknowledge the work of the following crew members. Costume and makeup. design and props. Set design and props. Light and sound. Let us also acknowledge the TIS Choir's fantastic voices. Phenomenal band. And the TIS Orchestra in collaboration with National Symphony Orchestra. As well as Sax Bosa. And now, let's acknowledge the selfless work of our student directors. Choreography directors, Nanikia Henkra and Samantha Azu. <laughs> Acting directors, Nubuke Gajako and Chloe Asini. Our music director, David Kwampa. <laughs> Sets and props, Ida Williams and Kelvin Antonio. Media directors Caleb Jimmo and Tui Odonkor. <laughs> Costume and makeup Benita Kusi and Sarah King. Lights and sound, 
Adam Kofi and Salim Roland. And the main directors of this play, Edwina Kekabinina and Ryan Aprella. And we would like to say a big thank you to our service providers, Mido, Orchestration Lights, and the National Symphony Orchestra. We would also like to say a big thank you to our parents and our families who are always there for us. We also appreciate our co-founder, Mrs. Comfort Ajavon, for the support and the great tips. The work of the production management team, the school management, staff of TIS, kitchen, maintenance, and our janitors. This is a collaborative project by the Creative Arts Department and CAS. We wish to acknowledge all members of these two departments. A huge thank you for their mentorship, encouragement, and support. Mostly, we thank God. None of this would have been possible without him. Thank you for being such a wonderful audience. You have done more for us than you can imagine. And see you next year for another splendid production. Thanks. Finally, we would like to say a very, very, very big thank you to Mr. Elikem for putting together this video for you. As well as Mr. Ebenezer and Mr. Rama King and the rest of the cast team. Thank you very much. Do that one dance, baby. That, that one dance. Yeah. Oh, you don't know how to do that? Baby, do it for you, Grandma. Come on, I'm old and I'm trying to learn it. Well, yeah, do it. Oh, my God.